When you visit someplace new for the first time, you have no idea what to expect. You read brochures, you look on the internet, you look at images, try to get a grasp of what you're going to experience. But nothing can prepare you for reality. Reality in Greenland is immensity. Giant, giant, everything. For our trip to Greenland, we spent a lot of time in the fjords. This first shot, I think, sums it all up in the terms of immensity. If you look at the center of the photograph, you'll see our ship with an iceberg behind it. But in the foreground, it's dwarfed by two major tabular type icebergs, not to mention the rocky cliffs, which are part of these fjords, which are just absolutely amazing and provide an incredible background for some of the images that we'll show you further on here. One of the things that I love doing is getting up before the rest of the ship. Sunrise always gives you a surprise. And in Greenland, it was no exception. I was up early to watch the sun come up. And one of the things about the Arctic color is yellow. For some reason or other, yellow permeates even during the daytime on the horizon. I'm not sure why, I'd love to learn why. I just love the way this lone iceberg was out there, another iceberg to the left of it, then the mountains, and then the color. Kind of sums all up what you see at sunrise. But the next shot, I think, says it even better. This was from very, very far away. I have no idea what the distance was, but a lone giant iceberg mimicking the peak of the mountain behind it with the subtle orange and yellow colors that come with it. When you look out and you see this, it's just like, oh, wow. Some of the elements of Greenland are the rocks. And this is something that I just was overwhelmed with compared to any other place I've been in any of the Arctic regions, whether it be Salvbard or Antarctica. But the rocks are just amazing. They have textures, they have lines, they have colors. The story behind the rocks is fascinating, but it provides a remarkable backdrop, not only as you're cruising through the fjords, but with the ice in the background and when we do treks and excursions onto shore. I've never been interested in rock before, but the abstracts that I see in the rocks here in Greenland just took me away. So this is one of my rock shots. I have a lot of them. This is what I'm talking about when there's an iceberg in front of the rocks. The two contrast in such a way that I've never photographed icebergs this way before. I've seen tons of icebergs in Antarctica over the last 11 some odd years, and they all look beautiful. They're all against the horizon. Sometimes there's like a hazy mountain behind them. But these icebergs are 50 feet from the walls of fjords, 
with veins going out of them and textures and diagonal lines, you know, that mimic even the textures and all the intricacies on the iceberg itself. You know, the more I spend looking at these images, the more I find interesting things uh, in the image that just kind of just define something different than I've ever seen before. And it also begs for me to do black and white. And this is a giant tabular glacier iceberg. It's all like part of a glacier that came off a glacier. You can still see the peaks and the valleys uh, from the top of the glacier itself. Floating down the fjord with these beautiful mountains behind. And photographing and watching my histogram in the finder, I was able to make sure that I could balance out both the rock wall and the brightness of the iceberg, knowing that this was a shot I wanted to turn into black and white, and I feel it just works. I get so excited when I see these images, and specifically when you're looking through the viewfinder, realizing for the first time what a new experience this is. There are tons of glaciers in the fjords of Greenland, and of course more icebergs than I've ever seen before. And this is a nice image where you can actually see a glacier coming down from the pack ice with icebergs in front of it. And I really like this one just because the iceberg balances out against the uh, moraine and the, the rock wall on the left, and you got the curve. And, and these were also made, many of them, from the moving ship. So you would actually recompose almost every second. And after a while, you got to anticipate when the iceberg was going to be in position. I wanted that iceberg to be in the left like it is there, not in front of the glacier. So knowing the direction of the ship, I just waited a second or two until it came into position and snapped the image. You know me, once in a while I've got to have a little bit of fun with my images, usually after a Bloody Mary or two. But this is an image where I really saw the contrast and the drama and I wanted to accentuate it. So I worked the image a little bit, took some saturation out of the background and as well as the iceberg, kind of made it a monotone-ish, uh, dual tone-ish image. And this is the image I got. The texture of the ice, the mountains behind, the grayness of the clouds, and I really like that dark cloud mimicking in reverse, near reverse, the surface of the top of that iceberg. Don't be afraid to have a little bit of fun and go a couple places with your images. I'm going to do that with a few of mine, but one of the things that I really enjoyed doing was making black and whites. This image originally in color is just as blue as you can imagine, with this dark deep blue in the center where you see the darkness. But what really, really makes this image is the delicate texture of the ripples in the ice and the light reflecting off of that. And some of the mystery of all the little elements inside, especially that white line going through the very center of the image, uh, which is kind of like an ice fracture. This gives me a chance to have not a recording of what reality is, but to create an abstract of some of the beauty that is just presented naturally out there for you. Speaking of abstract, here's abstract in color. Repetitive patterns, something that you can't avoid in some cases. This was an iceberg that was probably turned over and as air escaped from the ice, it erodes these little valleys in the ice and it just brings out the blue color. And then you've got the water line below it. And I just kind of love the simplicity city on this. I have a number of images photographed like this. It just excites me so, so much when I see this.
we talked about a lot of stone walls. Well, here's an area we visited made of this red sandstone that was just carved away and eroded by water. And I really like the image because it once again has all the elements of Greenland, dramatic skies, majestic mountains, icebergs, this sandstone, uh, iceberg on the bottom right leading into this like eroded pedestal dominated and lived on by one bird. So magnificent to be able to turn a corner in a little bay and see this shot. Just one of the many surprises that we were offered while we were visiting Greenland. One of the things that I wanted to show you was, once again, perspective. In this case, I included a zodiac in front of the iceberg because you needed to actually be able to see a scale, the sheer size of these icebergs and how fast they change. Just to see the zodiac in front, put yourself in that zodiac. That's where you can be photographing these icebergs with us when we visit Greenland. And the zodiac drivers do their darndest to make sure that you're in the right spot the way you want to be to get the shots to make them count. Speaking of giants, and speaking of dimension, speaking of layers, this one first off was a magnificent iceberg. And we're doing the Zodiac cruise and we're coming around and I see that there's an iceberg behind this one. And I said, wow, if we can put it in the arch, it would be so good. So we asked our Zodiac driver, Yuki, if she could maneuver the Zodiac to the left. And as she did, the iceberg behind it came into view. So once again, I've got a peaked iceberg behind through the archway of this gigantic peaked iceberg as it was with the mountains and this incredible sky that just seemed to be so typical during our visit to Greenland. Now this is a classic, sun, iceberg, foreground, and brash ice. This is a lot of what we ran into and we just loved when we were there. Once again, the dramatic sky, the sun peeking through but not blowing out, uh, iceberg with the archway, and a little mini bird pointing towards the inside with a ton of brash ice. This once again is a definition picture of Greenland. One of the other things you might be lucky to discover is to awake one morning to fog so thick you can't even see the end of the ship. And looming through the fog in a very ethereal way are these icebergs that we've come to recognize over the numerous days that we've already been in Greenland. And they reveal themselves like magic. Unbelievable light. I've never seen light in fog that look like what we experienced in Greenland. For my last image, it was kind of the image that I really enjoyed one of the most is because I've loved photographing with long lenses. And this image was shot with the 400 millimeter on the Fuji X-T2. And what you're looking at is something probably close to a mile or so away. I'm on the bow of the ship when I shot this. And of course, everything kind of compresses with the long lens, but the clouds peeking around the corner of where we're about to go, the icebergs that are in front of us, which we have to navigate around, a glacier coming off the mountain behind, one of those magical things. And as we maneuver closer and closer, the image changes. I wanted to close with this image because this is the kind of thing that you can experience coming with us on trips to Greenland. Greenland is now on my list for yearly visits. I thought Antarctica was the place to be. I thought Svalbard was the place to be. Now, once again, I've got another polar region which I'm completely in love with. I feel like I've only started to scratch the surface of the possibilities of what I think I can photograph in Greenland. And I can't wait till next year when we take this trip one more time. So thanks for taking a look at my images. I hope you take a look at the article, give some consideration to joining us next year. If it's anything like this year, you're, you're gonna have an adventure that can't be beat. And we are taking a different route through ice pack along the ice edge, hopefully to catch a couple polar bear, as well as down the east coast. I can assure you, now that I've got a handle on what Greenland's about, you're going to have a photographic experience you haven't had before. If you've been to Antarctica, you owe it to yourself to come to Greenland.